All right, so here's your homework, extra practice, derivatives. What is a derivative? It is the slope of a tangent line. That's our first definition. There are more, but that's the first one. How do I find it using a limit? So I want to find the derivative at 4. So I'm going to use this form of it. So it's the limit as x approaches 4 of f at x subtract. Now I'm going to plug in 4 here. So 4 cubed times 3. I'm just going to use my calculator. I decided I'm going to have one beside me. So 4 cubed times 3. Take away 5 times 4. That's 172. Then I'm going to subtract that, which I did. And then x subtract 4 in the denominator. Next, I'm going to factor this. So I cheated. I factored with my calculator. And you all have a calculator that you can factor with too. So what I did with our new calculator, I'll just show you sneak peek, is I typed in 3x cubed minus 5x, subtract 172. And I'm just going to write it down. The whole point is not try to get all flippity flip with algebra here but that you understand the process, the journey with a limit to how to find it. So when it gets a little flippity flip, it's like, come on. So this example, I feel, is a little bit over, over the top. So I'm using my calculator tool to make it simpler. So there it is, factored. And I couldn't factor by grouping. I couldn't factor by a difference or sum of cubes or any of that. I, it'd be ridiculous. I, I'd have to use the rational zero theorem, and that was like a million years ago. I'm not doing it. Calculator, done. Notice the x minus 4, they divide out. And now just plug it in. So again, I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to go 3 times 4 squared plus 12 times 4 plus 43. And I get 139. All right, the next one's going to be simpler. Number 2, can you find the derivative at negative 1? That's the limit as x approaches negative 1. Do you want to try setting it up first? You can press pause, too. So that's f at x, subtract, and then I'm going to plug in negative 1. So when I plug negative 1 in, I get 1, and it's negative 1 after that, plus 4. So the answer is 3, so I'm subtracting 3. And then it's x subtract negative 1 in the denominator. So let's clean that up. So that's negative x squared plus 1. And that's x plus 1. To factor this, I'm going to factor out the negative 1 to begin with. So there's a negative 1 I'm going to take out of both. So then you can see it's a difference of squares. So I factor the negative 1 out of both. Then you can see... It's a difference of squares, so it's negative 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, and we still have that. So now that when you factor out the difference of squares, you can see the whole that divides out. Now you can substitute in. So put in negative 1. That's negative 2 times negative 1, so the answer is 2. One more time with limits. Find the derivative at negative 2 using limits, the limit definition. So as x approaches negative 2, it's f at x, subtract, now plug in negative 2. So that becomes positive 6 over negative 1. So that's negative 6. Because a negative and a negative makes it positive. 
But then when you have a negative and a negative six, the denominator, we actually have a negative, a negative, and another negative. So that's why it's negative six. And that's all over x subtract negative two. All right, let's clean this up. So the denominator is really x plus two. We want common denominators. So I just need to change the second one. Now this is gonna be a plus because of the negative and a negative. We have a six, and I'm just gonna multiply top and bottom by x plus one to get common denominators. So that's the limit as x approaches negative two. I'm gonna combine like terms here. So negative three x plus six x, that's three x. And then six times one is six. That's all over x plus one, which is over x plus two. Then, We're going to factor. So factor out of 3 from both. That's 3x plus 2. That's over x plus 1. And then times the reciprocal of the denominator. That's how you divide fractions. See, all the algebra, all the math you've done since kindergarten leads you up to have the skill, the tools to do calculus. So when you didn't learn a tool, a skill, this is where it pays. So fractions, integers. Factoring, all that leads us to be able to be able to get to the calculus. So x plus 2, the whole divides out. Plug in negative 2, and you get 3 over negative 1, or just negative 3. All right, enough with limits. Now practice using some rules. So first, the power rule. So number 4, can you do the power rule? Press pause. Maybe you want to practice this. Or you can practice it with me. 3 times 7, 21x squared. 2 times negative 3, 6x. And the derivative of 4 is 0. Done. Next one. The derivative, far simpler than limits. 5 times negative 1, subtract 1. 3 times 11, subtract 1. And the derivative of 9x is 9. Number six, negative 20x cubed plus 3x squared. Is it becoming like more intuitive to take the derivative? Number seven, I'm going to write it calculus friendly. That's 2x to the one-third subtract one. We got to be careful here because this is going to be a chain. So one-third in front subtract 1. Now 1 take away 3 is negative 2 over 3. The derivative of negative 1 is 0, but we have a hook here because the derivative of the base is 2, so a 2 needs to be included. This is a chain rule question, sometimes called a general power rule. All right, write this calculus friendly. 8x to the 1 half minus x to the 5 over 4. Take the derivative. So 1 half times 8, that's 4, subtract 1. 5 over 4 times negative 1, that's just 5 over 4. 5 take away 4 is 1 over 4, and you are doing this, flying. Here, I want to write this with one base. So first I'm going to write it as 3 over 5 instead of a radical. Then I'm going to remember the exponent you do not see is 1, and I'm going to add them together. So 3 over 5 plus 1 is 8 over 5. So if I get common denominators, what's 1 plus 3 over 5? That's 8 over 5. Now, that's that middle school work, right, on fractions that we now use in calculus. Now it's 8 over 5 times 1 in front, subtract and 8 take away 5 gives me 3 fifths. Keep going. Number 10. Calculus friendly. So that's 2x cubed minus 9x to the negative 2. Write it as a power. The derivative using the power rule is 6x squared. So 3 times 2, subtract 1. Negative times the negative is plus 18 x to the negative 3. Here, to write this calculus friendly, it would be negative 4, 10x, negative 3, and so on. You know what? 
This is a quotient rule. So I'm just going to use it as a quotient rule because you got to do a hook with it and so on. Let's just practice the quotient rule. So the quotient rule for this one is a nice healthy fraction. The bottom times the derivative of the top, which is 0, minus the top, and I'm going to consider the top negative 4, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 10, and then take the whole bottom and square it. There's the quotient rule. This one I can write with 5 over x cubed minus 7x over x cubed. Then I can simplify it. Then I can take the derivative. So in this case, 5 over x cubed is 5x to the negative 3 minus 7x subtract 1, take away 3. That's negative 2. Exponent rules, remember, from middle school. Take the derivative. Negative 3 times 5. Subtract 1. Negative times a negative plus 14. Subtract 1. And it's done. All right, now let's use the product and quotient rules. So the product rule, first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, 3 times 2, that's 6x squared, and the derivative of negative x, negative 1, done. Again, practice the product rule. First times the derivative of the second. Now 2 is 0, but 2 times negative 1 is negative 2x, plus the second times the derivative of the first, that's 2x plus 3, done. Two more. The quotient rule. So here we go. The quotient rule. Big healthy fraction. Here we go. The bottom times the derivative of the top. 3 times 2, 6x squared, negative 5x, negative 5. Subtract the top, 2x cubed, subtract 5x, times the derivative of the bottom, 2x. Then take whatever is in the bottom, square it, and you just did the quotient rule. Again, the derivative here, big healthy fraction line. Last one, the bottom times the derivative of the top, 2 times negative 1, negative 2x, plus 4, negative 7 is 0, subtract the first, negative x squared, plus 4x, minus 7. And then the derivative of the bottom is just 5. That's the slope of that line. And then 5x subtract 8, you square it, and that finishes the quotient rule. Mr. G Math, over and out, I'm so proud of you. This is not easy. This is right there calculus, awesome calculus. And you're doing it, and I'm proud of you. Till next time.